right, how, how are you doing? This is Carl Catholic. Uh, in this segment, we're talking about five reasons for the existence of God. So the first one is the Kalam argument. Okay, uh, it was named after an Islamic uh, philosophical tradition that they uh, re refined it. And the first one is whatever begins to exist has its cause of existence. Okay, two, the universe began to exist. And three, therefore, the universe has a cause of its ex existence, God. Talk about the contingency, uh, reason, or argument. Whatever exists uh, that does not have to exist requires an explanation for its existence. Okay. Uh, the physical universe does not doesn't have to exist. Three, therefore, the universe universe requires an explanation in something that must exist uh, for God is the only logical being that must exist for that to happen and also uh, five therefore God is the explanation for the existence of the universe <laughs> about the moral argument okay one if God doesn't exist then the objective moral values don't exist. Two, objective moral value values do exist. Three, therefore God exists. Okay, uh, the first premise is something that uh, Christians and atheists may agree about. Okay, uh, many Christians have argued that if God didn't exist, there would be not a rational basis for objective morality. Okay, and many atheists have said. Yeah, since uh, there's no God, morality is a human, it's a human construct. Uh, good and they say good and evil aren't real; they're just words we use. Okay, our concept we invented. For example, uh, there's an atheist philosopher, Michael Roos, that wrote morality is a biological adaptation. Okay. So it's he's saying it's just a survival to reproduction and consequently any deeper meaning is illusionary. So the other premise is about uh, objective moral values and duties do exist. And if we're honest, we mustn't we acknowledge this? When we hear stories of murders by a serial killer, we don't think my our uh, biological adaptation is causing to feel apply feelings of disapproval towards these acts. No, we think these crimes are evil. Because murder is wrong, not wrong, wrong for me, but perhaps right for you, but simply wrong in itself. The institution of such moral value, values are real and so do, deeply embedded in the human heart, even those who deny objective morality invariably can be found making moral judgments and expressing moral outrage. <laughs> The ontological argument was devised by Anselm of Canterbury, who wanted to produce a single simple demonstration which would show that God is and what God is. It may be far from simple, but perhaps the most controversial proof for the existence of God, most people who hear of it are tempted to miss it immediately as a, a riddle, but uh, uh, distinguished thinkers of every age, including our own, have risen to defend it. For this very reason, it's intensely philosophical proof for God's existence, its place of honor, is not within popular piety, but rather textbooks and professional journals. So Anselm, Anselm's version, it is greater for a thing to exist in the mind and in reality than in the mind alone. To God means that, that then which is greater that cannot be thought. Three, suppose that God exists in the mind, but not in reality. Four, then a greater than God could be thought, uh, namely a being that has all the qualities of our thought of God, has plus real existence. Five, this is possible, for God is than that which is greater cannot be thought. Six, therefore God exists in the mind and in reality. There's a question. Suppose I deny that God exists in the mind. I would reply, in that case, the argument could not conclude that God exists in the mind in reality. But note, the denial commits you to the view that there is no concept of God. 
and very few would wish to go that far. The teleological argument for fine-tuning, okay, we come to this argument, it's about the argument for design, uh, how God would design it. Although advocates uh, of the so-called intelligent intelligent design movement have continued the tradition of focusing the example of biological systems the cutting edge of contemporary discussion concerns the re remarkable fine-tuning of the cosmos for life so for the last 40 years scientists have discovered existence of intelligent life depends on a complex and delicate balance of initial conditions and they get the big bang itself okay uh, this is fine-tuning in the universe. There's two sorts. The first is the when laws of nature are expressed as mathematical equations, or you find them appearing in certain constants, like that constant that represents the force of gravity. And the second, there's certain ar arbitrary quantities that are put into just initial conditions on which the laws of nature operate. For example, the amount of entropy or balance between matter and antimatter in the universe. Okay, so in a summary, the fine tuning of the universe is due to either physical necessity, chance, or design. Two, it is not due to physical necessity or chance. And three, it is due to design. So um, if you have questions uh, or whatever, drop in a comment or you're not in agreement, just to be kind, we'll just discuss and I'll do my best to answer you. And uh, this question about why, why uh, the reason for why God exists.